St. Rita's School was started in 1915 to help those who could not hear. It's always been the mission of our school to continue to do that, and we do that up to today, continuing to educate those who cannot hear, whether they're considered completely deaf, whether they have a hard of hearing or just a small hearing loss. We use the visual communication, sign language, to help them give us their thoughts, and that's how we give them our educational concepts, to be able to teach them through sign language so that they can become productive members of society. My son Braden was born with a mild hearing loss, um, which is odd for us because neither one of our families had any history of it and I didn't have any trauma during my pregnancy, so it came as kind of a surprise. But he failed his newborn screening in the hospital. And um, so we worked with his audiologist at uh, Children's Hospital for a while, and then at about 15 months old, his uh, hearing loss dropped to a moderate to severe loss. So they wanted to go ahead and put hearing aids on, and at that point, we decided to pull him out of his current daycare and look at transferring him here to St. Rita's. Um, and once we did that, it made a huge difference in, in his communication skills and his frustration levels and just his behavior and everything like that. It got so much easier. He started really opening up. Um, he was learning a lot more. He was calming down a lot more. So it was, uh, it was really good for him to come here. And um, I think it helped him quite a bit. Well, St. Rita's has really assisted us as a family to be able to communicate with our children uh, and with the, not just what they offer the children, but the support that they offer parents of, of deaf children. The kids are great as they learn ASL in their, their school and they, they come home and they have their spelling words and whatnot. They're teaching me the science for them. So, so we're kind of learning together, but there's just a lot of support and just learning about the deaf community. We were totally unaware uh, in so many ways of the deaf community and what it's all about and just how accepting uh, the school and the community has been of our family and the support and what have you has been wonderful. We have children that have additional disabilities that are now attending our school because they fall within our mission. And it's been very valuable because of the methods that we're using. It's been very helpful to these children. So the child might have some Down syndrome, the child might have some attention deficit disorder. It just depends on the individual. The Apraxia program started at St. Rita's basically uh, 10 to 15 years ago. There was a parent that came in with a child that the school districts weren't sure what to do with, the medical people weren't sure what to do with, and so they uh, asked us to at least take a look and give it, give it a try. In layman's terms, apraxia is a term that has come in the last 10 years, I think. Basically what it means is that the person can hear and process that, but has difficulty processing it into an expression. So in other words, they can hear what's going on, but they have trouble speaking it back to you. What we looked at and what we basically have been able to understand is that we needed to give this child some type of alternate communication, an expressive communication without words. So the sign language is basically that. It's a very good expressive communication. It's visual. It uses the other side of the brain rather than the speaking side of the brain, but the visual side of the brain. I had a baby thinking all was going to be fine. Then started realizing early on that um, working in maternal child that he wasn't verbalizing, wasn't making, you know, sounds that he should have normally been. Um, and so my concerns were that something either he wasn't hearing or something was just not right. Um, so we went to our local pediatricians and consistently kept saying we were concerned, we were concerned. They sent us to Children's in Cincinnati. Um, at age three, Caleb was diagnosed with apraxia. I'm a huge, um, love a lover of speech and I love to talk and communicate with people and I can't imagine how he felt every day not being able to be understood or to trying to express himself. Caleb realized at about three or four years of age that he was different than other kids and so a lot of times he would play the quiet shy role just because it was so hard for him to say my name is Caleb or you know I want to play ball where we come from, one morning he got out at our other school um, in Kentucky and he signed good morning and um, 
the woman didn't understand sign language and she thought he was doing an obscene gesture to her and she scolded him for it and so you know as a parent it just broke me because I can't imagine being excited to say good morning to somebody and they not understand what you're saying and so um, he wouldn't ever sign good morning any at all until we come to St. Rita's he the first morning we walked into this school he walked in and the people at the front signed good morning and our little boy turned around and looked at us and signed good morning to the people and it and with a big smile on his face because he knew that was the first that he realized they understood him and he understood what they were saying my name's Lori Custer and um, my husband Bill and I have a son Drew Custer uh, Drew's now six years old um, he was a typical baby, but by the time he got to be, you know, two, two and a half, we started to become very concerned that there was something wrong. And we started taking him to speech therapy and we a attended a, um, like a seminar for the parents. And we, after several months, we really didn't see any change whatsoever. And, um, started to become even more concerned and so we took him to his uh, pediatrician and she was suspicious of autism but it just didn't seem like it quite fit to me because it seemed to me that he was um, really wanted to connect with other people and other children so um, we continued with speech therapy they had recommended intensive speech therapy which we did and still did not get any results whatsoever from the speech therapy. Finally, uh, by the time Drew was almost four years old, my husband and I were just starting to panic and it was becoming so difficult to take Drew places. I could see that he wanted to be with other children and he, he, he couldn't talk, he couldn't do anything but you know, physically connect with people and uh, it was very painful to watch and feel that he was trapped. So um, our neighbor knew people at the Mayo Clinic in uh, Rochester, Minnesota. So we took him there and spent an entire week um, with a team of doctors, um, psychologists and uh, psychiatrists and neurologists and audiologists and uh, speech therapists. And finally, finally, he was diagnosed with apraxia. And Caleb started here in the kindergarten sign and say program and we began to see a child who went from a very frustrated little boy who no one understood but us what he was trying to communicate to being able to express more and more every day. He's learning to write, he's now reading. Um, we just have seen so many positive outcomes. Now he's starting to socialize with his peers that he's coming home and signing and saying things to us about wanting his friends to come and stay the night and just things as a parent that you look for every day for your child, a typical day. Um, for Caleb has been very hard, but now through St. Rita's he has had the opportunity to express himself and be accepted and that has made all the difference in the world. Having him in a, in a immersed area here with children who understand him, peers who understand him, teachers who understand him. It was like the biggest miracle that we've ever experienced. And um, I just can't say enough about St. Rita's, how wonderful it is. We came to St. Rita's. It was, I think, the coldest day in January ever. And poor Drew was terrified. He was very intimidated. And uh, after he played with a ball in the gym for a while and he started to relax and he started to see people communicating using sign language, I could tell he was paying attention. And we left after about a three hour visit. And that weekend, I saw him start to use more signs. He went up to his father and he signed dirty. And my husband said, what is he doing? And I said, that's the sign for dirty. And I had never seen Drew use that sign. 
but I could tell that something really clicked with him. Until Drew was about four and a half, he could not say mommy. And I cannot tell you how heartbreaking that was for me, that my son could not call me to him. I would go out in public situations and I would hear other children say, mommy, mommy, and my heart would break every time I heard it. And it wasn't until Drew was here at St. Rita's and until he was about four and a half that he was able to say, mom, it was the most fantastic experience. He couldn't say, I love you, but he started to do the I love you sign. And I would pick him up from school and he would be so excited to see me and he would sign, I love you. And it was, I, I, I just cannot tell you how much I had wished for that. And it was such a gift. It was such a gift to hear those words finally. He was about five years old when he could finally say, I love you. And I, I don't, I'm not sure he could even do it now if, it, if he hadn't, if he hadn't had the, the people here at St. Rita's who understood how to communicate with Drew and, and how to help him to express himself. And it was phenomenal. Our friends and our family could not believe the, the change in him, how much happier he was. And now, as Drew has started kindergarten, I can understand about 90% of what Drew says to me. And most importantly, he is learning. He's excited about school, and I think he likes it because um, he's, he's able to understand and he's able to learn here. From the bottom of my heart, I know that we've done the right thing for my son and that he has a great future ahead of him. And I cannot share that with you all. Um, those parents who have never walked in the shoes of a family that has had a child with um, moderate to severe apraxia, it is a very, very frustrating and heartfelt disorder. And so I want to thank the people at St. Rita's and I want to thank the ones that have really tried and again as this is a new diagnosis for a lot of families and they're overwhelmed and you really don't know what to do and and how to do it um, again I believe that that there are interventions out there and there are places like here that have made these children have um, a chance where they would have never had a chance in a normal school. St. Rita's is a very very special place where Drew has felt extremely loved, and so have my husband and I. And what is happening here for apraxic children has, is very unique, very wonderful, and it wouldn't be possible without the love and support of the deaf community here. Um, we have been embraced by the deaf students, by the deaf staff, and we feel incredibly grateful that through, through their situation of being deaf, that Drew is going to have a much, much better life and be able to achieve who knows what um, because of it. And we're very, very grateful. And I just hope that more children in this country, in this state, in this world can understand what St. Rita's has to offer to children who are struggling and families that are struggling with apraxia.